<laughs> Gosh, Pocket Ronnie made me enjoy eating triangles. <laughs> so welcome back. Okay, this is Appendix A. Um, this is just a review of some topics from geometry. So in Appendix A, we're dealing with right triangles. Anytime you have a right triangle, you can use Pythagorean Theorem to solve any of the sides of the triangles. Remember, Pythagorean Theorem is leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Or you might see it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You will see it this way on like the SAT test or any standardized test. A and B represent the legs and C is the hypotenuse. As a reminder, in a right triangle, the legs are on each side of the 90 degrees and the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So here we're looking at, we're in the appendix, so this is appendix um, A, and there's two pages in the appendix A, so this is A1, problem number four. And you have this right triangle and we're trying to solve for the hypotenuse. So using Pythagorean theorem, then we have 10 squared, the leg squared plus the other leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. 10 squared, 100. 7 squared, 49. That 149. But we're not solving for h squared. We're solving for h. So we take the square root of both sides. And that's actually a decimal. And so they're going to leave most of these answers in radical form. So, and there's no units, no inches, feet, yards, so I'm not going to put units. So, this is H, and then always look to see if you can simplify this radical. So, 100, square root of 149 will not simplify, so you can leave the answer just like that. No need to put it in a decimal. In, um, some answers will be in a decimal, some will be in a radical. So, if you want to put it into a decimal, that is approximately 12.21. So if you're going to put in a decimal, a decimal, you need to have radical form as well, both forms. So, okay, now we're looking at, um, this is on appendix A, but page 2. So A2, problem 6. So here in this triangle, you, the missing side is the leg. So make sure you put everything, all your numbers in the right place. Remember Pythagorean Theorem, leg squared plus leg squared is hypotenuse squared. Our unknown is the leg squared. We know one of the legs, eight squared. We don't know the other leg, so that's our unknown. We know the hypotenuse. Make sure you put all your numbers in the right place. Don't say eight squared plus 15 squared, no. So that is 64. We don't know that leg. That's 225. So now we need to subtract our 64 over because we are solving for the leg. So that we need to get this all by itself. So leg squared equals one hundred and sixty one. Then but we want the leg, so we take the square root of both sides. That square root and that square cancels. Square root is opposite of squaring. And I don't believe we can simplify the square root of 161. So that would be approximately 12.69, but you can leave it in radical form and I don't believe that radical can be simplified. Okay, now what if we want to use Pythagorean theorem with radicals? Okay, this is problem A2 on uh, problem number eight, appendix A, page two of the work of the pro of the worksheets, and then problem number eight. So, what if we have radicals? Same thing. You can use Pythagorean theorem. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So this looks like this: seven squared of two squared plus seven squared of three. Squared, it's important to put this whole thing in parentheses, squared equals hypotenuse squared. I'm going to write it out the long way just so you can remember of how to multiply numbers and radicals. So 7 squared of 2 squared means 7 squared of 2 times 7 squared of 2 plus 7 squared of 3 times 7 squared of 3 equals hypotenuse squared. Numbers to numbers, radicals to radicals. 
So number to numbers, 7 times 7, 49. Radicals to radicals, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4. Plus here, multiply numbers to numbers, radicals to radicals. That would be 49 times square root of 9. Square root of 3 times square root of 3, square root of 9. Keep simplifying. This means 49 times square root of 4. What is square root of 4? Just 2. Plus 49 times square root of 9. Square root of 9 is just 3. So that would be 98 plus 147. <clears throat> Add those together. 245. Take the square root of each side. So H, the hypotenuse is square root of 245. Hmm, not sure if that simplifies. Uh, can't be divided by 25. I don't think that simplifies. So I was going to see if I could pull out a square root of 25 out of there. But if we took the square root of 245, that is approximately 15.65. Again, most of the time they're going to want you to leave it in radical form, but simplify the radical. Okay, now we're going to look at these problems. This is back on page A1, problem number 21. They're giving you three numbers, 10, 24, 26. They want you to prove if this is a right triangle or not. So if it is a right triangle, Pythagorean theorem will hold true. So how do you so in a right triangle you have legs and hypotenuse. How do you know which one of these numbers is a hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is always the longest side. In a right triangle the hypotenuse will always be the longest side. So 26 is the largest number of these three, so that is the hypotenuse. So I'm just going to label it like this. That is the hypotenuse, which means the other two are the legs. So we use Pythagorean theorem. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, which means we can take 10 squared plus 24 squared equals 26 squared. If this statement proves to be a true statement, then it is a right triangle. If it's a false statement, it is not a right triangle. And then 24 squared is 576, and 26 squared is 676. 100 plus 576 is 676. That is a true statement, so yes, these numbers do make a right triangle because this statement ends up being true. Look at problem number 22 on A1. You have those three numbers. Well, two of those are legs, one of those is the hypotenuse. The largest side is always the hypotenuse. So 32 is the hypotenuse. So if we set it up as leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. If this comes out to a true statement, it is a right triangle. If it's a false statement, it is not a right triangle. So this is 225 plus 289 and 32 squared is that. So 289 514, make sure I added those right, yeah, 514 does not equal 1024. So since one side does not equal the other side, this means that the Pythagorean theorem is not true for these numbers, which means no, it is not a right triangle.